Let it out. Seven, eight, nine, ten, a machine here. There you go. Nobody works like David in this house. I started to devise ways to break a soul of a human being, of, a, of an object, of, of, of whatever's in front of me. If he stranger, but he's not just any old stranger. He is David Goggins, a Navy SEAL, who says, if it doesn't suck, we don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know me, son! It was in the dark. I went, to, I went to a place, man, that I'm like, I can do anything here. We gotta live here for a while. Oh. Feel pain, accept pain, and know pain. Those who do not know pain will never understand true peace. Get it! Nineteen! You me, son! Yeah! Twenty, you got some more in you! Twenty-one! Yeah, get it again! What about the other six hours? And he said, oh, I thought I only had to run 100, so I did 101. I said, well, normally when you enter a 24-hour race, you run the whole 24 hours. And, uh, Do that. That's, that's the hard part, Do you man. ever listen to music when you run? Never. Never. How was the heat for you? I didn't even notice it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't notice it. So, um... And now... This world shall know pain. Almighty push. Goggins lived with me. His rule is we had to do something every day that sucked. <laughs> well, I first saw David at a 100 mile race and I was doing this part of a real aid, with real aid team with six friends. And he One day I was sitting on the couch and uh, in Connecticut where I was living at the time and on the ticker on the, on the TV, the emergency broadcast system came up. Stay inside. You said to David, look, I can't run, I don't have any underwear. And right. you said what? You said you need legs to run. Right, you need legs to run. Yeah, you don't need underwear. Right. It's like, man, Goggins, that's impossible. And he said, you know, I already, I already know what your biggest problem is. And it's like the limitations you're putting on yourself are, are self-imposed. Get the fuck back on the bar. He was doing it alone. At around mile 70, I saw him, he was about 100 pounds heavier. He broke all the bones in both of his, small bones in both of his feet and a kidney failure and finished the race. And I'd never seen anything like this in my life. And I was like, I gotta meet this guy. And stay inside, freezing rain, icy conditions, high winds, stay inside, it was like beeping, stay inside. And Goggins like, this is amazing, man. Let's go for a run. <laughs> Cause you are that guy now. Right. I mean, you genuinely are a legit badass. Right. And at one point in time, you were a, a legit terrified person. Yes. So what was the, the one problem? thing about David is what you see on social media is actually what you get when you interact with David. We work. Yeah, but you had conditions, David. What were your conditions? You agreed to do this under one condition. Just one condition. Just do what I say. Yeah, do what That's I it. say no matter what. No and, matter what. And what pull-up record was 4,020 pull-ups. And I was talking about breaking this record. People are like, oh my God. I went right to a pen and paper. They go, what are you doing? I'm doing the math, man. He showed up super early, and when I got here, he was already with his shirt off doing chin-ups. <laughs> I was like, I walked into the back where the gym is, and he's he's there. One more, one more, David. Who's one more to carry the boats? You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You did it. Yeah. My mother told me, as a kid in Long Island, don't go anywhere near the frozen water. If you fall in, you have like a minute. You know. Right. He's bathing in it. So, of course, I go in. And I found out that I had so much more in my reserve tank. Like, my baseline was here, and he taught me that it really should be up here. And I never went back from that. And that was an important thing. I was all jacked up, and I said, all right, well, what's, what's next? He said, well, what's next is we're not leaving here until you do 100 more. We're not leaving the gym until you do 100 more. That day. Now. Does this sound anything like your workout plan? You invite a stranger to live with you and your family for one month as your personal stranger, but he's not just any old stranger. He is David Goggins, a Navy SEAL, who says, You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever the fuck is in front of you. That's what I realized. Of like, you're about to go in a place where you've never been, motherfucker. I was that guy who ran away from absolutely everything that I got in front of me. But not many people knew that. When Jesse calls you and says, hey, will you come live with me? What did you say? Merry Christmas, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs>
you know that song um, from Rocky One, round 14, when Rocky gets knocked down the corner. I listened to that. It's two minutes and 13 seconds long. Mm. I listened to it on repeat for 17 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's the medical benefit of jumping in a frozen lake. And he said to her, there's no medical benefit. She's like, this is what your husband signed up for. You know, he's like, I want to see how far he's willing to go to get to his goals. This is the promised land of mental hardening for me. I love this place. And you have the instructors who, who you, know, you know, they've been there, done that. Now they're instructing you. So they do their eight-hour shift. They have their parkas on. It's usually cold, coffee, drinking their coffee. And they're beating the crap out of us. And when I started realizing, I started playing mind games. And I was like, you know what? I bet these fuckers are looking at us judging themselves about when they were going through hell week about let me see i'm looking at goggins right now i was better than him i was better than that guy i was better than that fucker over there i was like okay okay you gotta judge me right, <laughs> right. so that's what i'm gonna do to you so you run a mile i run a mile my other whatever team runs the most amount of miles right wins the race he had no teammates So what I started doing was I got my boat crew, boat crew two. It's in the book. It's a great, great story. Say, like, come here, guys. You can't break boat crew two. You can't break boat crew two. <laughs> so it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, and everybody's broken. Everybody's beat up, man. And, and like this, I mean, you start moving like a robot. Everybody's like just kind of just trying to get through Hellwick now, and your energy zapped. And they know Wednesday's like that. Your whole philosophy of it doesn't have to be fun. It has to be effective. I sit back and enjoy the pain. Right. And you live your life. You said you embrace the pain. I do. I believe that they put it in your head that oh, yeah. Wednesday you're going to be tired. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing. They they tell you how you're supposed to feel. So you are feeling that way. I was like, uh, don't let these motherfuckers tell you how you're supposed to feel. No, it's day one, motherfucker. No, it's day you know how you get that fight or flight response when you get to move real quick? Yeah. And, you know, I, I started learning the mind a lot how to get myself jacked extremely fat where's the rest of the team that sounds like him and he weighed a lot at the time so so when they had us doing this simple thing that guys were struggling with Boku 2 was just launching the fucking boat and you're yelling yeah you can't fucking hurt us you can't hurt Boku 2 and I looked on the instructors faces and it looked like someone had just fucked with their soul and I looked at my guys in my book and I said hey guess what those motherfuckers aren't fucking tonight we <laughs> own space in their fucking head we on space. They're going to think about us tonight. They're going to think about how the You're fuck. killing boners. That's right. Charging. And we start fueling off of that. We start fueling off the fact that, man, it takes one second of energy to steal everybody's. And then you have all the energy you need. That's all you need. You need to look at someone's eyes. You know how it is when you fight somebody and you broke that motherfucker. He's like, oh, God, man, I don't want to go back to the next round. And you feel like, my God, I can fight all day. I can fight all mm. day long. That's what taking souls is. But you have to have the will, the heart, the courage to go that distance when you're exactly jacked up. You have nothing left to give and give more. That is an interesting thing about the mind is that you can find inspiration. And when you find inspiration, when you get charged up, all of a sudden you have energy. That's right. Yeah. That music is blaring. Yeah. And I'm like, man, once that shit comes off and you get popped in your fucking mouth. Yeah. <laughs> your headphones are on the sidelines, brother. That's how I train my mind, man. I, I, I train my mind because I'm not going to get popped in my mouth, man. I'm going to get popped in the back of an alley one day, man, running around doing what I do. And there's gonna be no music. Yeah. You better fight, you know, you better figure it out. Come on, Come on, yeah. 21! Yeah, get it again! Come on, we see. In the misery, when everybody's suffering, everybody's all poopy pants and their mentality's down and everything, I started just like, my God, this is where I shine. And I started using all that misery for tons and tons of tons of drive and motivation to to, to then lead people further. Because you can get a lot of power through misery. And once people see that, my God, Goggins is fucking going. Then everybody says, Roger that. Let me get my shit and go too. So I started realizing that if you can just find strength just a little bit longer, you will have a crew of people following you along the way. And that is another thing that no one can ever teach you. Because you, you're going to have to learn that on your own. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to figure out how to pull that energy out of your mind on your own. It's not... There's, 
there's no book you can read. Now, all of a sudden, I have it. I've got the technique now. I know how to do it. Yeah. No, it's it's a, a grind that you have to start and finish on your own. You have to take great pleasure in the fact that no one wants to be where the fuck you're at right now. Great pleasure in that. It must make, you know, it has to bring a passion out of you. It has to bring something very, very weird out of you, man. Like, you know, people don't really understand what that is. When you're in the worst environment possible, the worst situation possible, and everybody's looking like, God, man, I hope this ends. And you see that. Time slows down and you see that. You're, you're feeling that. Everybody has that look on their face like, God, it's got to go. I don't want to be here anymore. And who's one more to carry the boats? You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You did it. Yeah.